Life is so busy, if you blink, you can miss something amazing. It's important to take a moment and enjoy what we have and the people around us. I'm Mo Hagen, Chief Operating Officer for CanFit Pro, and welcome to A Moment with Mo, a podcast where I will welcome some incredible guests to talk fitness and nutrition, mindset and self-improvement, setting your goals into action, and much, much more. Now let's get chatting. Hello everyone. 2023 is all about moving forward and embracing courage to live your life authentically as you strive forward. And really, our year is about moving towards success, however you choose to define or envision success to be. One way I'm choosing to move forward with courage this year is to start my new podcast. And this is my very first one, and I thank you for joining me. It's called A Moment with Mo, and well, it will be a few moments. I am so excited to start this out, and I thank all of those, all of you who have encouraged me along. Courage is the theme also for the CanFit Pro 30th Anniversary Conference and Year, and I'm so blessed to have co-founded CanFit Pro 30 years ago. I can't believe it's been that long. Some days it feels like yesterday. Of course, when I started Camp at Pro, it was with courage because I had really no idea what I was up to or what the whole journey would be about. But one thing I will share today as part of moving forward towards success is that you really need to start with knowing why. And then the way does appear. I can say that with, with great confidence. So as we kick off my podcast, we're starting with a conversation around courage, courage to be authentically yourself, courage to be strong, to be brave, courage to be Wonder Woman, or whatever superhero you dream of or can envision for yourself. And there is a story behind Wonder Woman, and we will share that today. We being that I am joined by an incredible friend and colleague in the fitness industry and someone who speaks courage every day, who writes about courage and who represents courage with her latest number one best-selling book, Split Second Courage. And so my guest today to kick off my podcast series is Christine Conti. And I am so honored to have you here, Christine. Let me introduce you, if I may, for those who might not know who you are. I'm not sure who that would be, but uh, let's just give it a go. Christine is a former investment banker and English teacher who reinvented herself after a life-altering diagnosis at the young age of 30. She has since become a best-selling author, international chronic disease and fitness educator, motivational speaker, podcaster, and ultra-endurance athlete. Whew. Christine has spent over two decades researching and studying alongside leading doctors, exercise scientists, nutritionists, all in the area of how to prevent and battle disease through healthy lifestyle. She is the creator of programs such as Full Proof Fall Prevention, Let's Face It Together, Facial Exercise and Rehabilitation, the Arthritis and Chronic Disease Fitness Specialist Courses, and Reinventing the Woman Retreats. Christine co-hosts Two Fit Crazies and a Microphone podcast. Actually, that is where we first met at the beginning of the pandemic. She is a three-time Ironman, 100 miler, and her signature best-selling book, Split Second Courage, was released a year ago this month. So happy one-year anniversary. And Christine, you gave me a note in your bio, and we're going to come back to this in a moment. And you said, note that Christine and Wonder Woman have never been seen in the same place. Now, there is a story to tell here. And so I'm going to say, let's get chatting. Welcome, Christine. Thank you for joining me. Mo, I am so honored and so grateful to be kicking off your podcast journey alongside of you. And a moment with Mo has been a long time in the making. And 
I just wish you the best. And as a fellow podcaster who's been at it for almost five years now, there is something special about being able to sit down, deconnect, put away your you know, emails and your phones and just talk because we don't do enough of this in the world anymore. And the fact that you are saying, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have the courage. I don't really know exactly where this is going to go, but that's what life is about. And that's who you are. So I'm just so darn proud of you for, for actually putting, you know, whatever you want to do into action. And that's what this is about. Sure is. It's about putting your dreams into action. It's about stepping into fear And you are just the queen expert about talking about forging your fear forward in the direction of your dreams. So we're going to dive into that. But Mm -hmm. I thank you for that acknowledgement. Uh, I can be honest and say that while I'm very comfortable writing and very comfortable being on a stage in front of hundreds or thousands of people and moving my body, my fear has always been, well, what about if I just talk about what it is that's important to me. Would people be interested? And so, you know, you never, you never know unless you just step into it, right? So here we go. And this is exciting. I think what what's really important is that when someone is on stage, no one gets a chance to really understand who the real Mo is. What do you like? What do you eat for breakfast? You know, what do you laugh at? What's your personality like? What, you know, when do you fail? Do you fail? You seem perfect. And Mm -hmm. how do you react to that adversity? This is what this is about. And I always think of when we talk about podcasts and courage and whatnot, you're putting yourself out there, that in and of itself in any way, because like you said, you could be comfortable on a stage in front of thousands, but those thousands, Mo, they're not getting, they're, they're not getting everything of who you are and a podcast, you know, like a book, not like an article, an article is like a summary of a story. You're, you're being you and you get to have your personality and there's going to be people that agree with you. There's going to be people that say, I can't believe she just said that on her podcast and that's what she thinks. And, but that's life and you don't want to agree with anyone else. And that's what I think part of, you know, I love the fact as soon as I saw that CanFit Pro is courage, I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I can't wait. I will be there. Um, Bell's on. And I just think that's, it's, it's important. It's not a, you know, I am, you know, going to stop this or be a better this, or it's, I'm adding something to my life. And Mm -hmm. this is, you talk about 2023, like a a new year and what are we going to do? And it's courage. I hate new year's resolutions. I don't know. I don't know how Mm -hmm. I feel, but I get into this all the time. A resolution is like, I'm going to stop sitting so much. I'm going to stop eating this. I'm going to quit this. And I'm like, no, no, no. New Year's is about not a resolution, but an affirmation. And I Mm -hmm. think that that is really important. So instead of saying, oh, I'm going to stop being so scared. No, I'm going to start making more courageous decisions. And, you know, like, yeah, yeah. And that's what makes a new year a revolution versus a resolution. Yeah, right. I love what you say. And and that really does speak to courage. People get comfortable, even when it comes to their resolution. Of, it's right. always the same, same every year. And then, of course, what happens is when it gets hard, people quit and they go back to what is comfortable. And we want to shake it up this year. And really, that's how Camp It Pro began. It was in a time when there was certifications and also conferences in Canada available to Canadian fitness professionals, but it was not meeting the demand. And there was such a demand for fitness professionals and yet not enough to serve that demand. So we courageously started it. And uh, quite honestly, uh, there was one question asked. I asked of it, of my boss who came up with the idea and said, you're going to run this conference. And I said, why? And he said, because it would be fun. And let's do it for a few years. Well, here we are 30 years later, and we're still having fun, also serving an incredible purpose and courageously embarking on a career path for hundreds of thousands of people who have come along on this journey. Speaking of a journey, we're going to go through a journey today because I want to share with 
I want to put into action the four parts of the blog that I have put out for the beginning of the year. It's become a signature series. And uh, now that we're journeying through January, I thought this would be great to have our conversation reflect the four parts. Mm -hmm. Our first part is how do you invite change into your life by embracing courage? And that's why I thought of you first and foremost for this conversation because of the book that you published. I know for me that embracing courage to change your habits, your mindset, even your beliefs does require change. And that is hard for many people. I was inspired by a book that is one of my favorites, and that is The Morning Miracle Morning. It's by Hal Elrod, and it is really a success formula. It's the not-so-obvious secret guaranteed to transform your life before 8 a.m. Now, if that doesn't get people moving, I don't know what does. I was inspired by the book. I came up with a seven-step, 15-minute morning success routine. I speak about it in blog or week number one, and it's become my formula for success that gets me moving into fear, but reprogramming my brain and doing the right type of personal development so that I can start each day and take action and set that desire or my why into motion. So I share that with those who follow me, and I wanted to segue to your book because my next favorite book is your book it speaks so authentically to courage it's packed with personal stories I'd love you to share why you wrote the book and what is courage and embracing change through courage mean to you it's a loaded question there Mo I know I know you've got so this. first of all I just want to lay it on the line that I don't get up every morning at the same time and spring out of bed and there's rainbows and butterflies and every day is just this. Yes, it's every day for me personally is scary. It's scary. It's challenging. It's I don't know what to expect. Sometimes some days are going to be like, everything's awesome. I'm such a winner. This is great. And other days I'm like, oh, gosh, that was can today be over because things are I feel like a failure. And that's you know, and that's just the, the nature of life, not, you know, every day we are riding the waves. And what's interesting is that some people, their entire life, they don't want to ride the wave. They just want to be secure. They want to mm -hmm. be safe. And I don't want to exist. I want to live. And I think that is the whole idea behind courage. And when you think of what does it mean to be courageous? Well, being courageous means that you're living, you're doing things, you're saying yes when someone asks you to do something or go somewhere or go on a vacation or go out to dinner or a date or whatever it is that's new, that's different, that's out of your normal routine. That takes courage. And you may think, oh, jumping out of a plane is courage. No, but so is trying a new restaurant. So is walking into a new store. So is saying, you know, picking up the phone and calling someone you haven't spoken to in a while. That's courage. And we we think that it's this big thing and we have to be this bold and every day. And it's not. It's these teeny little things that are courage. I have courage to try a new food or wear a new outfit. But that's it. Um, and it's those little things that add up. And when you talk about, you know, what what qualifies me to speak about this and be in the fitness industry? And I have to say that when I grew up, I was told, I was conditioned that fitness is a fun thing. It's a hobby. It's not a full-time career. People just do it for, you know, for superficial results. And so I did what I was told, you know, I was went into banking and teaching and I tried to follow what I loved. And I did have some courage because I did leave banking, but I always had a plan. I always had this safe plan. I'm going to teach here and I'm going to do this. And I, yes, I think it's important to get your education first. But with that education, if you have a passion that that's lying in here, like I really want to do this, or I love fitness, or I love running, or I, I love 
helping people and, you know, being a nerd, whatever. I think that is the most courageous thing you can do in your life is to follow what makes you happy and not Mm. let other people tell you their feelings and let it affect you. And when I look back, Mo, this is like, I just, I have these moments sometimes and they're like, you know, they give me chills. And I think about, you know, when you reached out, let's be on the podcast. I'm like, 25 year old Christine could not have imagined when I first got into taking fitness classes and certifications and going to conferences, could not imagine having Mo Hagen reach out and say, I'd like for you to talk about your book and your experiences on my first ever podcast. What? Like, like pinch me. What happened in that, you know, that 20 year period? And what happened was, is that I elbowed my way into where I knew I belonged. And that Mm. wasn't my original career path. And I've gotten beat up and I've gotten knocked down and I've gotten told, no, you're not good enough. And no, you're not this and this. And, and I refused to believe it. And that I think you have it. And that is why we do what we do. Mo, no offense. I, I don't know about you, but no one called me and asked me to host my own television show. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I don't care because if there's not a door to open, you build your own door and you open it your damn self. You were podcasting and I did the same thing five years ago. We have the ability to give people a voice. People that maybe we have a little bit of courage and now we're able to bring them with us and say, I want you to tell your story. Just speaking is courageous. Think about raising your hand when you were in school. That takes courage. How many times have we been wrong? Have you been wrong when you answer any questions? Not only wrong, but I was actually told, I was actually told in high school that if I actually stopped talking and I actually listened more, I might get somewhere in life. I'll always remember that teacher. And I remember my inside voice saying, oh yeah, watch me. But back then, I thought I always had to conform. So what did I do? I stopped speaking up. Right. So it took me a lot of years and a, some right. counseling for me to learn how to speak up and use my voice. Yeah. Yeah. And with the same, you know, think about back in the, the fitness industry, it was about the way you looked, right? Mm-hmm. We all wanted to get into like the little tight pants and the leotards and the this and the, you know, look a certain way. And it's interesting that growing up and seeing, you know, mass media and whatnot and how it changed. Um, you know, that's, you asked me about my book and yeah, I, I was a big reader when I was younger. I did. I read all the time. I hated seeing movies cause I wanted to read it. I had my own little fantasy going on in my head of what everyone looked like. Um, fun fact, I have not seen all the Harry Potter movies because I read all the books and I refused because Ron and Hermione did not look like they did in the movie in my head. So, um, this was, so it, it took me, um, you know, I always wanted to, but never, you know, yeah. never well, came into fruition. And, you, um, you said, you said three really powerful things. I hope that our, our listeners and viewers picked up on one, what you envision in your mind is what actually puts your dreams into action mm-hmm. and not to let anyone else decide how small or big that will be. Two, you talked about the passion and it's, is it not true that um, when your emotion feel, uh, can translates into excitement versus fear, it's actually the same emotion until your brain gives it a definition. And then three, it's about aligning yourself with the people that are going to support you, not the naysayers or the dream stealers. Mm-hmm. And we meet them along our way, but it's about knowing who those people are. And we're going to talk about connection and the power of connecting with the people that are going to support you on your journey, not pull you back or hold you back. Those are all amazing. And I'm sure um, that many of the stories in your book, that's what one thing I love about your book is that, yes, you speak to the, the science of the psychology and science around courage, but you also share stories of incredible, they're tear jerking stories about people who chose to, find courage as their superpower of sorts to move them forward, to live their life authentically and 
courage to be their true right. self. And that's what I was going to say is, you know, you're starting this podcast and I knew after interviewing like 500 just amazing human beings around the world that, you know, stories of overcoming and resilience. And yes, we do a lot with health and wellness and fitness, but it's about inspiration. You read these stories and you're like, I'm going to run through a brick wall right now. Like that was the most amazing, or what am I have to complain about? And just seeing all these different ways that people were able to overcome. And I always say that you're never going to come to me and I'm going to say, you have to do exactly this, 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 you're going to be, you're going to be fine. It's well, there's stories that I told of, you know, yeah, I've been beat down, which, you know, we've, we've talked about this in the past, but I got diagnosed at age 30 with the disease. And I spent some very dark days thinking this is it. My life's over. I'm not going to be able to move. And I met a lot of people that went through similar things, maybe much worse And they had their own coping mechanisms and skills that they got through. And I felt, well, I have this ability to to reach people around the world on a podcast. Why not also give them a voice through the book? So, you know, kind of that's how I wrote the book was a lot of like these most powerful stories that I collected that showed courage. So it's not just me, like me, 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 I'm, you know, I did this, that I will never, ever tell you what to do, but I want to show you how other people were able to find their own, what I call split second courage that we all Mm. have. So as we dive into the next part, I'd love you to define split second courage. What exactly does that mean? So we all have split second courage. We all have courage. We all have the ability to make a decision. And for some people, making a decision takes a split second. For others, all the time in the world is not enough to make a decision. And when we talk about split second courage, do you have the ability to make a decision based on what you believe is the right thing to do, what you feel in your heart and act. Because when you think of, and and I wrote this in the book, I I always reflected on people like in 9-11 that I use the phrase, let's roll a lot, let's roll. And that was what they had said in the cabin when, you know, they knew there was hijackers and they decided, let's roll. We're going to go take you know, we're going to make a decision. We're going to take down these hijackers, whether it's our life or not, because it's, this is something that's bigger than us. And I I'd like to think that everything we do in life is not just about us. It's a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. And they made a split second decision. Let's roll. And it was the right decision. It was a decision that was bigger than them. And are you able to do this? Because for the people that don't have split second courage, Are you able to live with yourself if someone asks you to do something and you say no? And back, you know, I want to think of like, if I'm 90 years old, I want to look back on my life and not have regrets and not say, you know what? I wonder what my life would have been like if I wonder what would have happened if I. And that's really what split second courage is about. It's about being able to be confident and be accepting of who you are, what you want, and to act upon it. That mm. is what's like courage. That's wonderful. I know really good. Uh, I love when you connect a philosophy to a real life situation, because that's something that everyone can connect with. So thank you for sharing that. The next, it's a great segue to our next part. And in my part two of my blog, we, ch- we talk about ways to strengthen your courage and get out of your comfort zone and what stands in the way of accomplishing that. Now, you said it's about taking action or acting on. So let me ask you this. What is the number one thing, and perhaps define it for us, uh, what's that number one thing that prevents people from stepping out of their comfort zone? It's always that first and foremost starts with F. Mm-hmm. Uh, fear. Failure. Uh, oh my gosh. Um, I'm a fraud. Imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Imposter syndrome. I mean, just being embarrassed. Any of this. 
And you think back when you were a kid, right? <laughs> think back of how, you know, you didn't do certain things because you're like, oh, what if, what if I try and, you know, ask this person out and they say no? What if, um, you know, I wear this outfit to school and everyone laughs at me? What if, you know, what if I trip and fall? It, all of us, what's interesting is that we all experience failure. And it actually happens on a daily basis. And I want you to think about this for a second. Um, how many times have you failed at something today? Mm. Can you think of oh. any? Today. Oh, yeah. Just no. the last. Yeah. Anything good? Okay. Um, I think of if I'm outside and I failed to make that green light turned red. Isn't that, didn't you fail to get there in time or there's, there's little things all the time that are mm-hmm. actually failures mm-hmm. and we don't think of it that way. We didn't recognize it. Yeah. We didn't recognize it. Yet, are you sitting and crying, feeling bad for yourself because you missed that light? No, you're not. It, it's, so it's like rethinking of, of what failure is is one of the, is one of the biggest things. And what's crazy is that once you think of what's the worst that could happen, think about, you know, and I know people say you shouldn't think about the worst, but I do. What's the worst that happen if I fail? Mm. All right. Well, next, next, next. It wasn't meant to be. And it's, Mm -hmm. what did you learn? I say this all the time. People get so mad at me. They're like, I didn't get the job. I didn't get this or this failed. And I'm like, all right. So what did you learn? What are we going to do about it? it? Here's the problem. How are we going to solve it? Like, what's the, what's a solution? We're in the fitness industry. What is the problem? I deal with people with chronic illnesses. Mm-hmm. I know the problem. So here's the solution that I try and help people find. And guess what? We're not all going to be Olympic athletes. And I've also given up my dreams of being, you know, Miss America. I got married, you know. Uh, miss miss sports illustrated like i could care less yeah own it it own it well own you it. know we we compare ourselves with these things that are mm-hmm. compare equals despair this is this oh, is the that's beautiful courage thing it's yeah. own yourself is own the yourself. biggest thing and, and don't you, apologize and don't apologize i know that's very canadian of me i apologize all the time my husband's like what are you apologizing for you're one minute late walking out the door for our power walk. We're going to be two hours. Like, stop apologizing. So I've chosen that I'm going to replace the apology, apology to the powerful moment that came about that led me to being late walking out the door and share that as a story or as a opportunity. Uh, you also say in your book, uh, a way to get out of your comfort zone, you you coin it as a charging headfirst into fear. And that is something that I, I thought was fascinating. So perhaps a tip for people who are, you know, willing to um, charge headfirst into fear, what would you say? Is that where it ties into the split second courage philosophy of act versus think about it? So there's a couple things at work right here. We tend to overthink everything. Mm. We overthink. And then all of a sudden we're sitting there thinking and then we don't act. And now it's time has passed. One of the, one of the most important, valuable things in the world is time. There's nothing that you can do to get back time. So when we think like reimagining our relationship with time is, is one of the keys to getting you to act sitting there and saying, all right, I would really love to quit my job and start new. I okay, I've done it a couple times. I'm on my like third, fourth career of I made it jobs. Number one, because I know I follow my passion and I'm gonna elbow my way and put myself in with people that share the shine, share the passion, and are going up. They're not going down. Um the think about it as If you are, you know, say you're 55 years old, you've got parents that are older, you only see them twice a year. All right. If they live for another 20 years, twice a year, you're only going to see your parents maybe 40 more times in your life. Or you see a friend once every two years. How many more times do you have to spend with them in your life? Mm. And once you start 
putting this into your own, you know, you've got to put it, you've got to make it relatable to yourself. Can't be like, you know, even though I gave that example of 9-11, um, I want to know how many people have actually stepped in. And, you know, if, if someone's in need or there's a car crash or there's a, you know, you see someone just f- fell or dropped their groceries. Are you the one that steps in right away without asking and says, what can I do to help? How can I help? That That's split second courage. And looking back, are you going to regret not trying to help when you're, you know, and, and that time that's passed, are you always going to think about it? Um, I think there's power in that. And to your point of how do you get yourself to jump? I, I guess there's got to be something in me that, you know, my mother had always said to me, you know, Christine, watch out, watch out for the peer pressure. Peep, she's from Brooklyn. Watch out for the peer pressure. And I turned to her when I was younger and I said, mom, I am peer pressure. Mm-hmm. And I just realized that you can use peer pressure for good. And that's what Mm. I've been able to do. But having people around you, like I have a really good friend that does a lot of, you know, crazy races and, and helps put me into uncomfortable situations. We do it for each other, but we do it together. Do you have, do you have someone that's an accountability partner? She's one of my best friends. She's been through some stuff in life and we know that when we do like a race or I've jumped out of a plane with her, that was frightening. If I was not, Mo, if I wasn't strapped to a really good looking guy, I don't know that I would have gone. He was cute. But, you know, like things that are, they don't have to be that crazy, but Mm. it's, you find people that, and I tend to be that person who's like, hey, I think we should do this. And I just happen to be around people that just, yeah, we should. Or someone says something to me and I'm like, how I started a podcast was like, hey, you know what? I, I think we should start a podcast. That was it. Five years ago. And yep. it's changed the course of my life just by one little decision. One decision. And the right people. You have a right. powerful partner, a fellow right. fit crazy. Yes. Yeah. And that that is the power of moving yourself forward and taking courageous steps is aligning yourself with the with the people that will support you. And that is not by accident. That is by the attraction that you create and also what you seek. Just like when you choose, I, there's really two parts to um, the power of connection. And that is connecting with your why and connecting with the people or the community, the profession, the whatever it is that you need to align with that puts you in that position that you feel powerful, confident, or at least you know you're able to serve your purpose when you're in that environment. And you create that. A lot of people live in environments or a job that they hate, the people they work with or the Mm -hmm. boss that they have, but you made the change because you took that courageous step forward. And that's really about what I talk about in my part three of my blog is, first of all, connecting with your why. It's so important because as you know, You make decisions based on what brings you the most passion and how you can serve the world by yourself, like by you. Why why is actually an acronym, world helped by you. So knowing what your why is, the rest will appear, but it's also about finding the people that will not stand in your way, but open those doors for you or cheer you on when you build your own door and open it up. What do you, what are your thoughts around that? Gosh, absolutely. And what I would say to people, because a lot of people say it's hard. Sometimes I hear people complaining about their jobs and I try Mm -hmm. not to surround myself around those people. Have I, I wouldn't say lost friends, but my, my pack is not the same as it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Mm -hmm. 25 years ago, because your passions change. And I tend to gravitate towards people that are goal driven, that are out there to change the world, that are doing something good for their mind or their body. And if you're not part of that, then what are you, what are you promoting? Is it, are you just chasing money? Are you just chasing fame? Is it, if you're serving the world in some way, I want to be a part of it. I want to know what you're doing. Like, you know, like Mo, like you've, you're passionate. You're this like, Oh, I want more of that. Like I, I want that. What is it? And, and we feed off of each other. 
Um, I think it is very important to realize that you don't just have to go out and quit your job and change. That's scary. That's super mm-hmm. scary. Even, you know, for me, I didn't just quit. Did I, you know, make a big leap? Yeah, financially. But I also knew if this doesn't work and this, I had spent what, 20 years already in the fitness industry, building connections, working with companies, working at, you know, boutique gyms and big box gyms and taking 800,000 certifications of everything because I loved it. So I made happiness my side hustle. Yeah. And I made it my side hustle for so long that I couldn't keep down that feeling of I would go into the classroom and I'd be lecturing. And I mean, I could still give a wicked like lecture on Shakespeare. Don't get me wrong, but don't tell anybody. I would go in there and I just knew every morning that there was something bigger. There was something greater. And I, it was, it almost like was crippling. And, Mm. and I knew that if I didn't try, I would regret it for the rest of my life. And when you think about making decisions, that for me, I would not be okay if I didn't try. I could easily still be nice and comfortable teaching, professor, you know, totally fine. But there was something inside of me that was like, you've got to go for this. There's there it's and I, I don't. Again, I think all of us have this weird thing sometimes, but mm-hmm. I think of, I always think of myself, I'm a lighthouse. I'm a lighthouse. And guess what? I am put on this earth to light the path and light people up. And sometimes I am so bright that I burn your eyes and I'm a little bit too much for you. That's okay. <laughs> because I love that. We're the passion, right? We're the yes. light. Come oh, to you the light. the path. Oh, I love that. We're going to dive into our closing exercise before we do that. I love your analogy to the lighthouse and you are truly that knowing you as I do now for a couple of years. Um, you have a really incredible relationship with a superhero. I'm going to ask you to briefly tell us what's the connection with Wonder Woman. And then we're going to dive into an exercise about how to put your courage into action by exercising your confidence. So before we do that, what's with Wonder Woman? Tell us, tell us this. She's great. So I connect with Wonder Woman. That's why I connected with you. Love her. So um, back, this, this goes back to, you know, I'd gotten sick. I had a bucket list. I didn't know, you know, what was the doctors were like, we don't know what's going to happen with you. So I started running, um, you know, I started doing all these things that I never thought I could do just because why not? And I started running races and started raising money for charities and just bringing awareness. Like right now, what I do is I'm a chronic disease advocate. I bring that awareness. I give a voice to people in the fitness world that have chronic illnesses that feel like I'm not included or I don't think I can. And I'm like, yes, you can. So um, Wonder Woman has this quote. And when I was, you know, kind of my darkest days of being sick and feeling bad about myself, Um, I came across this quote and she says, in life, you have two choices, do something or do nothing. Always choose something. And that quote stuck with me for whatever reason. Like I was, wow, I got that like, what? And it was, I could use my disease and all this stuff as a crutch and feel bad about myself, or I could go out and try and inspire other people and try and get them to embrace their inner superhero because my gift in life, I didn't know what it was until I got hit with, you know, a disease and this and that. And it has been the most eye-opening, amazing experiences of my life. And I think a lot of people that go through some traumatic things start to realize, and, and for me, fitness was like, it was how much can you lift, you run, you, and now it's, how do I add longevity? How do I add not just lifespan, but health span to your Mm. life and feel good. And now that we're living so much longer, I want to choose to do something that is going to help people. And just like we talk about inclusivity, right? Mm -hmm. I want to include people 
that have chronic diseases like myself and, and cheer for them. And what, what I wound up doing is when I run for these different charities, um, I always think of like, yes, you can, you got this. So I actually have a Wonder Woman symbol on the back of my neck, right? All right, I'll show it to the viewers real fast since it's here. All right, if you can see me. So it's on the back of my neck. And what that symbolizes, you won't see it unless my hair's up, but what that symbolizes is when I'm racing or when I'm raising money for charities, if you can see that Wonder Woman symbol, it's a, yes, you can. Chase your inner superhero. And that's- where that came from. Wow. I had no idea. Thank you. That's so powerful. I, 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 I have a philosophy that, um, you know, be, if you, if you can be Wonder Woman, be Wonder Woman, otherwise be yourself. Mm-hmm. So I use that as a mantra yeah. for when I'm having those not so magnificent days, I choose to be Wonder Woman because being myself is being maybe too vulnerable. As you say, you don't wake up every day feeling like, whoa. So I do have an exercise um, that I share a lot and I use myself on a regular basis to protect, to strengthen and protect my confidence level because confidence really sits on the shoulder of courage. And I thought that was powerful when I heard that. So my exercise is based on the research from Dr. Amy Cuddy and I coin Mm -hmm. it power posing. And I have three power poses that I build into my exercise. It takes two minutes to change the physiology, your mindset, but it's through moving your body, which works for me being a fit pro. Moving my body, as I said at the beginning of the show, is where I feel more confident, but moving my body helps to set my mind into that state of self-confidence. And so um, that to me, I, I'm going to share a secret. I build it into every exercise class I teach. I always choose a powerful song to align with power posing because music evokes emotion and you always have to choose those songs that actually promote bravery, courage, power. So be careful what songs you choose because some can promote um, emotions that are not always positive. But I put it into my classes. It raises the mood. People walk out feeling stronger but they also don't always know why they feel even more powerful than just the exercises that they did. So Christine, I'd like to ask you, do you have a fun exercise that boosts your mood in the moment, your confidence, or it protects your confidence on in those moments that you're feeling vulnerable or fearful? Did you know this? Do you, did you know that I had one that I do? No, you didn't no. really. Oh my gosh. Okay. I thought that you knew, I was like, you've, Did you do some research? Okay. So this is, so every single, I have to tell you, every single fitness class, fitness class, uh, mindfulness class, yoga class, even if I give a lecture, I tend to do this. So at the very end, and this is like men, women, children, it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter if you are working one-on-one with me and you have, you know, MS or Parkinson's or whatever. So at the end of every single class, all right, we can do this together. All right, so what I have is I tell everyone, all right, shoulders back, chest is lifted, abdominals engaged. You're going to give me a deep breath in your nose. You're going to exhale out your mouth. And when you sigh, you are going to let go of everything that does not serve you. So we go, we take a deep breath in, inhale up. We exhale. (sighs) Yeah, you have to do that again, though. That wasn't loud enough. I know we've got things to get rid of. Ready? (laughs) Breathe in good. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale. (sighs) All right. Put your hands on your hips. Shoulders back. Chest is lifted. Abdominals engaged. Confident in who we are. Ready to conquer the world, the day, whatever lies in front of you. Because life is too short not to. And you are worth it. One more deep breath in. Exhale. (sighs) That every single class. You didn't know that? No, I didn't. But now I'm going to utilize that. Yeah. Shoulders back. Chest is lifted, abs and tight, confident in who you are, ready to conquer the world, the day, whatever lies in front of you. Like, so encourage, I encourage everyone to incorporate that as well, yeah. because that is based on the same social psychology that mm-hmm. Dr. Amy Cuddy speaks about. Yes. So thank you for sharing that. I also want to share that in my fourth part of my blog series uh, are powerful songs that you can actually work with 
to utilize these two exercises that we've shared with you, I always go to my, my song of 2022 is This Is Me by Kiela Settle. It was the green light song, therefore the theme song for The Greatest Showman. And I include a link to the most monumental moment in that entire movie in which they perform that song and you have to watch it to see what I'm speaking about. But if that song and that scene doesn't move you forward courageously, whether you're fearful or not, I'm not sure what will. Uh, Christine, I uh, would love to ask you, we're going to close in one minute. What is your go-to song or perhaps mantra that you use to protect or to build and um, light up your courage when you need it? So the the one thing and I know there's there's so many songs I can't even I, I can't even narrow that down to one um but what I will tell you is that aside from Miss Wonder Woman's you know always choose something I love to tell people that yes you can and there is no I don't understand anything about not being able to do something or can or try it yes you can I believe that, you know, and, and people I've, over the years, I refuse to believe there's any other way but forward. So remembering that, yes, you can and following that up with anything is possible mm. and just making sure that people know that there's people out there that are advocates of living a yes, you can lifestyle, having a yes, you can attitude is something that it's my mantra of yes, you can. I don't think I can do this. Yes, you can. And I, I say that over and over again, every single day to different people. And I just think that repetition, talk about being an imposter. If you do something enough, you become it. Yes. And I go back to, I wanted to have a, I wanted to have a voice in this industry. I wanted to provide a voice for other people, be an advocate for, you know, people with chronic diseases and inclusivity. And guess what? You, you, you work towards that enough. And here I go. I got my good friend Mo on her first podcast being a yes, you can girl. That's it. Yes, you can. I love that. And you're right. If you practice that and you become it. That's a very famous philosophy through Jim Rohn. It's not the doing, it's who you become in the process that is, is success, is the, is the, the reward at the end of the effort. I want to thank you for sharing all of that and so many magical and insightful moments on our uh, first podcast here, A Moment with Mo. And, um, this was incredible. I want to thank you. I want to thank all of you that tuned in, listened, watched, and uh, we really, I, I'm so excited. I hope you'll join me again next month. And uh, this is just the beginning. Thank you all. Thank you, Christine. Uh, you are magnificent and you keep being Wonder Woman. Yes, you can. And I sense a song coming that you need to write based on Yes, You Can because then we'll all listen and use it as our song to help Ooh. us strengthen and protect our courage and confidence as we journey through 2023 and beyond. So there you go. Bye Challenge for now, everybody. Accepted. <laughs>